everybody. We'll uh, give everyone a few minutes to just get logged in here. Oh, I see some more people joining. Perfect. Great. Okay, I think everyone's here that registered, so we'll go ahead and get started. My name is Megan Clark. I am the CEO of Clark Financial. I am so excited to tune in here with you all and just shed a little light on how you can take back control of your financial future. So before we dig in today, I have three main things that I just want to go over with you. Number one, first and foremost, before we even finish today, you're going to have the opportunity to download a complimentary white paper, and that white paper is going to give you the secrets to building a solid financial house. So stay tuned to be able to download that straight from our webinar today. Number two, you'll also get the opportunity to, opportunity today to talk about um, finding some time on our calendar to meet with one of our planners. And I'll talk to you more about that later. That's also going to be complimentary. So make sure you stay tuned for that. those different links will pop up on the right-hand side of the screen. And lastly, and most importantly, we're going to give you some knowledge today. And that is what we are all about at Clark Financial, is empowering you with knowledge to help you make better financial decisions. So stay tuned. We're excited to have you on board. And um, if you do have any questions, the chat function won't be open just so we can get through all of this material today. But just go ahead and, and uh, write down those questions, jot them down, send them over to us, and we'll make sure that we get your questions answered on that complimentary 15-minute phone call. So before we dive in today, I just want to give you a little bit more information about myself. So those of you that are on the call, some of you, I recognize some names, um, but some of you I don't think I've had the opportunity to meet yet. And so I wanted to just paint a quick little picture. Again, my name is Megan Clark. I'm the CEO of Clark Financial. And being the CEO, I get to wear lots of different hats, but I just wanted to paint a different picture for you, a quick little picture about why I'm so passionate about what we do at Clark Financial. So growing up, I was the youngest of the three siblings in my family. And what that meant is that I had to work really hard for everything that I wanted. So being the youngest kind of made me, mm, I guess, a little stubborn, you could say. Well, maybe pers persistence, a better word. But it made sure that I had worked for everything that I got. And so growing up, uh, you know, my dad, he was a baseball player. He played baseball on a scholarship at Madison College, which is now James Madison University. My brother played baseball, my sister played softball, and I played soccer. Did you catch that little stubborn word? <laughs> I always wanted to carve my own path. And so um, as I grew up, I also was always a helper. Whenever my dad was working on cars or my siblings were doing chores around the house, I was always right next to them asking how I could help, um, you know, make their, make their job easier, essentially. And so um, I've carried that trait into my career, and it's really the foundation of everything that Clark Financial is about. And so um, now fast forward from my childhood to high school. Imagine being a senior in high school, and I went to school you know, here in Fairfax County, but imagine being a senior in high school and your dad is diagnosed with stage four cancer and he's given a 50% chance of survival. That news was absolutely devastating to me because my dad was always my rock. He was invincible. I looked up to him. He, uh, you know, he was always there for me, whatever I needed him for. So the news was absolutely devastating, and I lived through that experience with him. He had um, the, the maximum number of days of chemo and the maximum number of days of radiation that they're legally allowed to give. And that was after he had a radical neck section surgery at Johns Hopkins University in Baltimore. The head oncologist there at the, at, during the time of the surgery told us that he had a 50% chance of survival. And that was also extremely devastating to me. But a few days into recovery, we found out that this, the surgeon was wrong. And he was able to have full mobility of his body, which was an absolute blessing. And we are so grateful for that. So now fast forward 16 years into remission, I'm happy to report my dad is cancer-free and doing well. However, from that experience, I decided I wanted to help people 
with the same thing that my father went through. I wanted to be an oncologist and not just for anybody, but for the smallest people. I wanted to be a pediatric oncologist. So off I went after graduation to UVA to major in biology and pre-med. Um, and I love that experience. I loved everything about UVA, Wahoo Wah, for those of you that are fans. Uh, I also nannied for a family when I was there, and they were both cardiac surgeons at UVA Hospital. They instilled in me to make sure that medicine was what I wanted to do because they had uh, different experiences where they had friends that got into medical school and found out it wasn't really for them. So I heeded their advice, and after I graduated, I decided to take a year off. I volunteered uh, with Fairfax County Fire and Rescue as an EMT. They even certified me to drive the ambulances. <laughs> um, but uh, I, um, through that experience, you know, I, I got a lot of hands-on medical experience. And during that time, I also had gotten a nine to five job at a corporation here locally. And I was just bored. I was done with my work, you know, before the day had even started. And at the same time, my dad needed, needed help in the office. And so, um, I decided that I would help him out because I essentially grew up in the business and so I knew it uh, up one side and down the other and I told him hey I'll help you hire and train and then I'll be off to med school well I don't know if I mentioned what year I graduated from UVA I graduated from UVA in 2008 so if you guys can remember what happened in 08 in the stock market and in the financial world it was the financial crisis that happened in 08. And I, do you remember how you felt during that time? So I sat there at the desk and my our current clients came in and they, they met with my dad and they were giving him hugs and they were so thankful that they had been protected. They were so thankful that they didn't lose money on all of their investments. And so... Um, the same thing, you know, as the referrals came in from our current clients, they were sitting there and they were wringing their hands in the conference room waiting to go meet with my dad. And I heard grown adults cry because their whole dream of retirement had just imploded. Their whole dream of being done with work in 2009 or 2010 had just been wiped out. They had to change the course. And so something arose in me in that year where a fire was ignited. And a fire was ignited to help people with something that's just as important as their health, which is their wealth. And so from that, I decided to dedicate my life's work to growing our company and to making sure that every family that we meet is never in a position where they're going to lose 30, 40, 50% of their entire portfolio right up before retirement and then their whole retirement plan has to change and so i am extremely passionate about what we do at clark financial we've grown the office from when i started it was just my dad and i two people to we have 14 people now on staff i just purchased our very own building in reston back in 18 and you know we're excited to continue to grow and to continue to provide value to you and just um, serve our community as best as we can. And so that's what we're here to do today is to empower you with better financial knowledge to help you make better financial decisions. So we're gonna go ahead and click over to the slides here and I'll tune back in here in a second, but I'm so excited to get this information to you. I wanna go ahead and get started and I hope you guys enjoy and let us know any feedback. Let me pull up the slides over here. And like I said, stay tuned because halfway through, we're going to um, offer up that complimentary white paper. And then we're also going to offer up time to get on our calendar as well with one of our planners. Okay, let's see here. Perfect. Okay, here we are. So, as you guys can see, there's disclosures on the, slide, uh, on the slides here. It's very important that whenever you're working with someone and trying to learn about their, uh, what they can offer you from a financial standpoint, 
that you really check them out. So this says that we're an independent registered investment advisor. Um, it essentially says that we have insurance and securities licenses, um, but you can always check people out at FINRA.com or um, IAPD.com as well. So let's jump in here. We are all gathered here because the past several months have been unprecedented. From a global pandemic sparking a historic market crash to government mandated stay at home orders, none of us could have seen a 2020 quite like this. It left many of those who've been, who we've been talking to lately feeling a lot like this, unsure of exactly what to do. A lot of us are feeling completely out of control about several pieces of our lives recently. People are dealing with this uncertainty in drastically different ways. There's no right or wrong. Everyone is, is entitled to their own feelings. Some of us are scared to leave our houses. Maybe we're scared about getting sick ourselves, and maybe we're scared about making others sick. While some of us are feeling like life must go on and things will be as they will be. And then there are some people that feel in between and they're just not sure which information to trust. If that's you sitting right now, if you're wondering what to do, I want to let you know that you're not alone. Waking up every day to try and make sense of everything you see and hear can be completely daunting right now. And when it comes to your financial future, knowing the right moves to make can be even more puzzling. So before we even really get into the meat of today's presentation, I want to let you know about an opportunity. Some of you on this session today likely registered simply because you'd like to get some questions answered. And if that's you, this is opportunity is for you. On the screen, you'll see an icon coming up. If you'd like to set a 15 minute consult to do nothing more than to get your most pressing questions answered, we are freeing up several calendar slots to allow you to do exactly that. We've been flooded with individuals calling for advice over the past several weeks, and that's what we're here to do, provide answers. So as you see that icon pop up, simply click it now if you'd like to grab one of these complimentary, no obligation, 15 minute phone consults. So what's going to happen during that phone call you ask? That's completely up to you. As soon as you click on the icon, you'll get immediate access directly to our calendar and see all available 15 minute time slots. At that scheduled time, we'll simply give you a call at the number you provide and you can let us know what's on your mind. Whether you're concerned about recent market losses and protecting what you have left, or you've recently lost employment and have questions about what to do with a 401k or whatever your concerns might be, we'd love to help you address your concerns. And that time is simply yours to use however you'd like. If you feel a more in-depth meeting with us would be beneficial, we can certainly set one up at the conclusion of the phone call. But we offer these as a service to the community to hopefully put some of your concerns to rest. So again, we'll put this icon back up a little later, but if you'd like to set a time to speak with us, feel free to click the link on, on the icon before the end of our session today. Also, if you have comments or questions as we go along over the next 20 minutes or so, please feel free to jot them down and send us an uh, email for feedback because that's how we're gonna get better, learning the good, the bad, and the ugly. And if you have any questions as well, we can address them that way also. All right, let's take a look at where we're headed over the next 20 minutes or so. Today's agenda. First, we wanna take a look at where we are right now, financially as a country, and how we got here. Second, while none of us has a crystal ball, we wanna take a second and look at where things could go from here based upon some key indicators. And finally, and most importantly, in my opinion, we want to look at what each of you can be doing right now to help take back complete control over your financial future, no matter what happens in the days ahead. I don't know about you guys, but it seems many people have grown tired of things feeling out of their control. 
whether it's being confined to their living rooms, kept from their jobs, or told when and where they can shop, people are feeling the need to regain control over pieces of their lives. So I'm excited to share with you something that you can be doing to grab the reins back when it comes to your financial situation. So where are we right now, financially speaking, and how did we get here? Without getting too into the weeds, I think it's important that with all that's happened, we take a Cliff Notes approach to summarizing how we got to where we are today. The story began on December 8th of 2019, when a resident in Wuhan City, China, was found to have symptoms of an un unknown coronavirus. Wuhan is the capital city and largest city in the Hubei province in the People's Republic of China, with a population of over 11 million people packed within it. So the virus spread quickly. Fast forward from December 8th to March 9th, and we find the impact of the virus here domestically. While even looking at this calendar may feel like a decade ago, it was actually just 12 weeks ago that this all re all really began here in the U.S. With investors worried about the impact of COVID-19, the stock market crash of 2020 began on Monday, March 9th, with history's largest point plunge for the Dow Jones Industrial Average up to that date. On March 11th, the World Health Organization officially deemed COVID-19 a global pandemic, and the market then experienced two more record-setting point drops on March 12th and March 16th. In fact, Monday, March 16th marked the single fastest drop in the Dow in history, with it falling 2,997 points or 13% in just one day. And over the course of just 22 trading days, the S&P 500 fell 30%. To put that in perspective, uh, in perspective, a retiree with $1 million invested for retirement, had they been invested directly in the S&P, they would have been down to $700,000 in just over three weeks, hundreds of thousands of dollars that likely took years, if not decades to accumulate, would have been gone in less than one month. While market corrections or declines of 10% or more are certainly common, market crashes of 30% or more are a little less so, and we've never seen one happen as quickly as we just did in March. If we look at this graphic showing data from Bank of America Securities, we can see that the second, third, and fourth quickest 30% drops on Wall Street all occurred during the Great Depression era. In 1934, 31, and 29, respectively, when the Dow actually plunged a total of 89%. Okay, so that is a snapshot of how we got here, but what else are we seeing? Well, you don't have to look far, right? We've all had plenty of time to see a lot, whether you're opening up your email, turning on the TV, or scrolling through your phone. Every headline for the past 12 weeks has been about some type of impact this virus is having on our economy. And while we're certainly wise not to trust everything the media puts out, there are a few variables that serve as a good barometer of things right now. This is, the first is a staggering number of people who have lost their jobs throughout this crisis. As of April 23rd, 2020, real unemployment rates are now over 20% with over 26.5 million Americans having lost their jobs. And other industries are taking major hits. Many hotels, for example, have all but been shut down, with lobbies looking much like this one. The estimated toll in the hospitality industry alone has, estimated, has been estimated at roughly 1.4 million a week. I'm sorry, 1.4 billion a week. Even the proposed $50 bailout for the U.S. airlines is not anticipated to come close to covering their lost revenue as thousands of planes sit idly at gates everywhere. Overall, a recent Reuters article reported that global airlines estimate their 2020 revenue losses to exceed $250 billion. 
The retail industry has also been incredibly hard hit with hundreds of thousands of merchants closed for business. In the U.S. alone, our retail industry is normally responsible for contributing roughly $2.6 trillion, or about 25% to the annual GDP, a number that will obviously be far behind as the curve finally flattens. So knowing where we are and how we got here, the second question is where could we go from here, financially speaking? That this is a question we've been fielding a lot lately, and it really no one it's really no wonder that why this is on everyone's minds. The reality is, if you asked five people right now where the what the market is going to do, you'd get five different answers because the truth is no one really knows what's going to happen. And frankly, anyone telling you do should seem a little suspicious right now. So rather than give you uh, some best guess or pretend I have some psychic powers, let's look at the facts. First, on top of everything else we have going on, we're in an election year. What does that mean to you? Well, there's something called the Volatility Index, or VIX, and it's a real-time market index that represents the market's expectation of a 30-day forward-looking volatility. As you can see here, since the year 2000, the VIX has been noticeably higher in election years than non-election years. So even if we hadn't had a global pandemic, a market crash, record-breaking unemployment, and major impacts to most every major industry around the globe, we could have already anticipated higher volatility in the market this year. And I wouldn't be surprised to see that volatility continue. With the U.S. already having 24-point trillion national debt, tacking on another 2.2 trillion can generally only mean one thing. Taxes will have to rise at some point in the future. While this may not have immediate implications for you, it's something we'll return to here in a few minutes. somebody's going to have to pay for all of the taxes that are due. The third indicator to keep an eye on is unemployment. Unemployment is anticipated to continue growing from its current level of 20% to as high as potentially 32.1% or 47 million Americans, according to a recent Forbes article. That's 7% higher than the country experienced in the Great Depression. 47 million people. That's roughly equivalent to all the residents in New York, Florida, and Colorado com combined. The fourth indicator to consider is the possibility of a recession. Generally speaking, a recession has been thought of as a significant decline in general economic activity, typically recognized as two consecutive quarters of economic decline. However, the National Bureau of Economic Research, which officially declares recession, says the two consecutive quarters of decline in real GDP are not how it is defined anymore. They now define a recession as a significant decline in economic activity spread across the economy lasting more than a few months. Normally visible in real GDP, real income, employment, industrial production, and wholesale and retail sales. So given this definition, we're already almost there. The final indicator to keep an eye on is what typically happens to interest rates during a recession. When an economy enters recession, demand for liquidity or access to people's money increases and the actual supply of credit available from lenders decreases, which often results in an increase in interest rates. Therefore, it's very likely to see us rise out of the historically low interest rate environment we've been in for some time now. So in summary, while none of us can predict the future with absolute certainty, we can with high probability anticipate that we'll see continued volatility in the market. We can expect taxes to rise as the government needs to be paid back for what it just offered in stimulus money. Many people think unemployment could continue to rise another 5 to 12 percent. We're already teetering on a recession and recessions generally result in interest rate hikes. A rosy picture, picture right? So let's look at our third and final question, the one that matters most, and that is, what can you do right now 
to help take back complete control of your financial future, no matter what happens. In a time in which so much feels outside your control, the reality is that your finances and the retirement you spent a lifetime preparing for don't have to be. Those things actually can be completely controlled. As we think about these next ideas, I'd like you to consider a question. In fact, I'll even ask you uh, to write this down on a notepad or jot it on your computer at home. The question is this, in times of crisis or emergency, do you consider yourself the kind of person who tends to freeze and panic and just let things happen to you? Or, are you more the type to step aside, gather yourself for a minute, and formulate a plan and take action? Go ahead and write down on a piece of paper at home, which one of these people do you relate to? And during this time while you're writing this down, I'm actually going to take the time as well to pop in the complimentary download of the white paper of the steps that you can take to build a stronger financial house. So you'll see that on the screen as well. But go ahead and think about this for a second. In times of crisis, are you likely to freeze, panic, and just let things happen? We sometimes joke in our office, if you could picture an ostrich with their head in the sand, uh, that's the person on, on your left. And then on the person on the right, you're, are you the person that's going to step aside, collect yourself, and formulate a plan? I ask this question because in times of crisis, those are the primary ways to react, right? And in a time like we're currently experiencing, many people are obviously worried about making the wrong move. But the truth is, for many people, the wrong move may be to simply do nothing. Go ahead and help me out here. Um, have any of you heard from a financial advisor? Just hang tight. Don't worry. The market will come back. Well, that might not be the right answer during this time because what happened in March, it may happen again. And we want to make sure that you're positioned in a way where if you saw that 30% drop across all of your assets, that you don't see that happen again. With everything that's been going on and everything everyone's being fed by the media, which I think we'd all agree we can no longer really trust, you can either sit at home frozen waiting for things to happen or you can decide you've had enough of that and you can plant your heels and make things happen. So let's spend the next 10 minutes together talking about three concrete actions you can take right now to not only protect your financial future, but actually take advantage of the current circumstances. Because believe it or not, the current environment actually creates some key opportunity, opportunity that you need to be thinking about. Action number one, the first concrete step you can be taking right now is to determine your continued exposure or risk in the market. We've already discussed that continued volatility is highly likely throughout the remainder of 2020. Some of you may have been watching and seeing this already. There have been days in which the market has actually had nice little pickups and other days in which the market appeared to be doing well and then lost all of its gain before the closing bell. So given that roller coaster, it's important that you know what portion of your retirement assets are still exposed to market loss. Some of you on today's call may recognize this guy. His name is Warren Buffett. And for the past 50 years, he's run Berkshire Hathaway's Berkshire Hathaway, which is a holding company that owns the likes of Geico, Duracell, Halsberg Diamonds, and Pampered Chef. Warren Buffett is one of the most famous investors alive, and he's currently the fourth wealthiest person in the world with roughly $74 billion in net worth. And what does he have to say about incurring market losses? Well, he's been quoted as having two primary investment rules. Rule number one, never lose money. Rule number two, never forget rule number one. Why does he say that? Because... As when it comes to your investments, losses hurt more than gains help. Let me say that again. Losses hurt more than gains help. 
and it takes a lot to recover from a significant loss. Buffett's always understood that if you want to make money, you start by not losing what you already have. You know, in March, when the Dow dropped 13% and the S&P 500 dropped, um, and then dropped a total of 30% in the weeks that followed, we were steadily on the phone with our clients. And to be clear, we weren't on the phones because we were panicked. And we weren't on the phones because our clients were panicked or should have been panicked. We were simply reaching out to them to remind them of the plans we had put in place for times just like these. Those were some of the best conversations I can remember having in years. But what was troubling about some of them was hearing from our clients things like, you know, our neighbors said they were down 27% or my sister just called and they haven't even heard from their advisor yet. Times like these are the times that you should be over communicated with, not times you should have to be chasing someone for answers. And in times like these, the greatest gift you can have is also is, is often clarity. If you're looking at your accounts and trying to determine on your own exactly where you stand or even exactly how much you still have at risk, I want you to listen very closely to what I'm about to say. Because one of the most misunderstood aspects of investing is what it takes to recover from a loss that you incur. And in talking with people every week, many of them are surprised to see how much exposure they actually have in the market. Let's take a look at why that matters so much. Let's say you had an even million dollars in the market and lost 50%. You'd be down to 500,000, right? That's all math we can handle. And many people simply think, well, if I had a 50% loss, I'd obviously need a 50% gain and I'll be back to where I started. Unfortunately, that's not how the math actually works out. And this is one of the most commonly misunderstood things about the market. As you see here, if you took the $500,000 that you had left after the 50% loss and you experienced a 50% gain, you'd actually only be back to $750,000, still 25% short of where you began. In reality, in order to recover from a 50% loss, you actually need a 100% gain. This is why Warren Buffett feels so strongly about avoiding losses, because losses hurt more than gains help. For those who have just experienced a 30% loss in the market, you don't need a 30% gain to offset or recover from it. You actually need a 42.9% gain. And how likely is that to happen? Particularly when we anticipate continued volatility for the foreseeable future. So the first concrete action you can take to put yourself in a better position is to find out exactly how much risk you're still taking. Again, it's not at all uncommon for us to meet with people who are either in retirement or within a few years of retiring who still have 60 to 70% of their assets ex exposed to market risk. And what would our buddy Warren Buffett say about that? Well, he actually does have something to say about that. He's famous for saying, for having said, when it comes to the market, you never know who's swimming naked until the tide goes out. In other words, many people don't realize just how exposed they are on Wall Street until it's too late. He also recently said, it's insane to risk what you have for something you don't need. In other words, the fourth wealthiest man on the planet isn't a big fan of taking on excess risk, particularly when it's not required to reach your end goal. So what does that really mean to you? It means you can live the life you've desired in retirement right now without having to take significant market risks to hopefully accumulate more than you likely should. Now, listen, I understand this flies in the face of some traditional wisdom you may have heard, 
brokers spout for decades now. They're known for saying things like I said earlier, just ride it out and stay the course. The problem here is there is no course to stay because we've never actually seen this combination of events before. There's never been a global pandemic anywhere near this magnitude impacting U.S. and global markets to this extent with skyrocketing unemployment during an election year, leaving the foreseeable future incredibly unstable. So I don't mean to sound testy, but anyone giving the blanket advice to just sit tight right now seems highly aloof to what's really going on. And if you don't absolutely need to be taking the risk to get where you're going, for many, according to Buffett, that kind of exposure, exposure just doesn't make much sense. If you'd like to receive a completely free risk analysis from our firm, risk analysis, meaning if the market goes down 30%, how much money are you going to lose? If you'd like to take advantage of getting a completely free risk analysis done, just click the icon on your screen. We'll keep this up for a moment here, but just click on that icon and you'll get direct access to our calendars to set up an initial 15 minute phone call consult to get this started. There's absolutely no cost for this to you. And frankly, if you've never had this done for you, it can be one of the most reassuring things you can do. Now, some of you may be asking yourself, what even is a risk analysis? That sounds like something from NASA. Is this going to be 200 pages of stuff that we can't understand? That answer is no. The risk analysis is a quick, simple review of your retirement portfolio to determine what portion of your assets are at risk in the market and also what risk you have of not reaching your desired goals for retirement. We, we do this in a few simple pages, and it gives you an at-the-glance clarity where you can see where you stand financially. With so much feeling uncertain right now, that kind of certainty is invaluable. I highly encourage you to take, uh, take it upon yourself to go ahead and take advantage of that complimentary 15-minute uh, phone call. I'll leave the icon up for a second as we transition into the second action step you can be taking right now, but don't miss getting that free risk analysis to see where you stand. Action number two that you can be taking right now to better protect and prepare yourself is to minimize the taxes you will be paying in the future. I know, I know, none of us likes to think about them, but let alone plan for them, but they're incredibly important to consider. If you are interested in not handing the IRS any more than necessary, and you'd like to leave as much as possible to kids or charity, if you're really not in, not concerned about any of those things, feel, feel free to ignore the next two to three minutes. But for the bulk of you, the next piece of information could be vitally important. Now, with just about any time I bring up taxes with new clients, they often say we actually have a CPA that we've been using for years. And many on this webinar likely do too. I'm actually not a CPA, but we work closely with them ourselves and they're incredible. The only danger comes, and listen closely here, the danger comes in assuming that all CPAs are doing tax planning. The reality is some accountants don't function as tax planners, but as tax preparers. In other words, they actually function more like historians like this guy here. Think about what we contact them for to file our taxes, right? In other words, they work primarily in the rearview mirror, determining which taxes we've already paid that we might be able to get back. That's not tax planning, that's tax retrieving. That would be a little like calling a coroner a doctor. They're two radically different roles. Now, we've already talked about the tax environment we're in and what we anticipate happening, but let's take a second and get your individual feedback. Given what you know about us being in a historically low tax environment right now and the government having just issued over two trillion in stimulus money to stimulate our economy, what do you think? Do you think taxes will be going up or down in the future? Go ahead and jot it down on your piece of paper at home. Do you think they'll be going up or down? Great. So, uh, so I would imagine most of you wrote that taxes are probably going to go up in the future. 
we all agree that taxes are likely to climb. So given that, again, back to the idea of sitting back and waiting for something to happen to you versus creating that plan and taking action, what could you do right now about taxes going up in the future? Well, let's see. As some of you see these words on the screen, they're old hat to you. For others of you, they these may be a little foggy and you may have heard these terms but never been 100% sure what they meant. Let me make these really simple. Traditional IRAs or individual retirement accounts allow you to put pre-tax dollars in and these dollars can grow tax deferred, meaning you pay no taxes, zero taxes, until you start taking withdrawals at age 59 and a half or beyond. People have traditionally loved IRAs because the contributions up to a certain limit are tax deductible. And the power of traditional IRAs tax deferral allows gains to compound on themselves, hopefully building a nice nest egg over time. Now Roth IRAs on the other hand, they're funded with already taxed dollars or after tax dollars. And those contributions are not tax deductible. But because you've already paid taxes up front, you don't have to pay them later when you take out distributions. And you don't have to pay the taxes on the money that you put in or on the gains. With these two types of IRAs, and they've been around for years, right? But they, they commonly get confused. So one of the easiest ways to think about them is a simple analogy of a farmer. Farmers have to pay taxes just like everyone else. But if you were a farmer and you had your choice, which would you prefer? Would you rather pay taxes on the seed you put in the ground? Or would you rather pay taxes on the harvest that the seed ultimately becomes? Because at the end of the day, that's really the difference between a Roth IRA and a traditional IRA. A Roth IRA is the equivalent of the seed Whereas a traditional IRA is the equivalent of paying taxes later on the harvest when there's no telling just how wild your fields might go. Fortunately, the IRS allows something some of you some uh, allows something that some of you may have heard of called Roth IRA conversion. This is different than a contribution. So listen up here. A Roth IRA conversion is simply tr the transfer of your retirement assets from a traditional IRA into a Roth IRA by paying the taxes due at the time of the conversion and then allowing all future growth and distributions to continue on tax-free. Much like traditional IRAs and Roths, Roth IRA conversions have been around for a good while. In fact, some of you may actually have entertained one previously because if you're pretty certain taxes are going up in the future, which we all now are, it can often make great sense to simply bite the bullet and pay those taxes now rather than waiting for them to climb and facing them in the future. Roth conversions have always been something to consider, but right now they may be even more attractive for many of you and here is why. Let's think of this spring here for a second as your traditional IRA account balance. And let's just say you had $100,000 in it prior to the market crash in early March. At a 24% bracket, a Roth conversion would have cost you $24,000. But if that same account were down now 30% due to market losses, that same Roth conversion would only cost you $16,800 because in essence, your account value has been compressed, kind of like the slinky on the screen. So this is one of those rare opportunities when being in the know can help you take an otherwise negative situation and leverage some positives from it. And remember, once that conversion is complete, you will never pay another dime on any withdrawals from that Roth IRA ever again. So if you'd like to see exactly what you could save on converting a traditional IRA while account values are compressed and taxes are effectively on sale, 
It's as simple as hopping on our calendar. Again, you can simply click the icon on your screen and you'll get immediate access to our calendar for a 15 minute phone call. On that call, you'll obviously have the chance to ask any questions you might have or have us address any concerns you've been wrestling with. And then we'll also be able to ask you a few questions a few questions to be able to conduct the Roth conversion review. This takes very little time and we can be back in touch with you within a week to let you know three things. First, we'll let you know what a conversion would cost in terms of taxes. Second, we'll let you know how advantageous it would be now compared to your account values prior to the recent market decline so you can get a sense of what it might cost should your account rebound to the pre-COVID-19 levels. And third, if you'd like our help actually completing the conversion, we'll let you know exactly what you need to do, do to complete it. To get that done, again, at absolutely no cost or obligation, simply click on the icon and schedule a time for a call. As you can see, prospects taking advantage, as you can see, um, many of the prospective people on the call, I don't know if you guys can see this, but uh, many of the people on the call are taking advantage of that time uh, to get on our calendar. So don't delay because we only have a few slots available for everyone on our call today. Um, thank you. You know, I see George, you just scheduled a time. Great. Awesome. Wonderful. Thank you for getting on the calendar. So, um, with that, we'll move on to the final tip of the day. So action number three, ensure your foundation is solid. So a solid foundation is, uh, you know, is key. So let's, let's talk more about what that looks like. The third and final action step you can be taking right now to take back control of your financial future is to ensure your financial foundation is secure. I don't know that there's anything we could be talking about that's more important for most of our clients than this. So be sure you're listening for the next two to three minutes. For years now, when new clients have walked in our door, we've visited with them about the different parts of their, their fiscal or financial house. Just like when building our physical houses, when building our fiscal houses, it's absolutely critical that we get one thing straight and solid. That one thing, of course, is our foundation. Several of you on this webinar may have built a home before, and as far as excitement goes, unless you're just, unless you just like staring at concrete, foundations are just about as boring as things come. They're just several walls of cement poured several feet deep into the ground, reinforced with rebar and metal. They're not that exciting, but they're absolutely critical because on them, everything else is built, right? So those fancy granite, granite countertops we all love or that amazing master bath we build, those things don't matter much if the foundation caves in. The same is true of your foundation in retirement. In retirement, the equivalent of your boring foundation is your income. For 30 or 40 years, the vast majority of you have been receiving regular paychecks. But once in retirement, the responsibility of manufacturing those paychecks falls part primarily on you. And when it comes to their paychecks in retirement, the last thing most people are looking for is excitement. Instead, they simply want consistency and predictability. Once in retirement, no one wants to find a crack in their income plan. This could show up in a number of different ways. It could look like a significant loss in the market that might impact the amount you have to create retirement income, or it could look like paychecks that simply don't keep pace with inflation over time. Lastly, it could look like a stroke or other significant health event that requires you to tap into a big portion of your assets and derail the plan. But the bottom line is generally the same. You get one shot at retirement and no one wants a big surprise as it relates to their income. So let's pause here and ask a question. If you've been working with a financial professional for a while now, has he or she provided you with a written retirement income plan? Some of you may be thinking back to your last annual review with your advisor or the statements you get and faithfully file away. To be clear, something like this is not a plan. And frankly, if you feel like you need an interpreter to understand it, that isn't really a plan either. 
Think about the plans many families establish with their kids in case they were ever to have a fire in their homes. Do those plans require someone from NASA to understand them? Of course not, right? They are incredibly simple. You're going to get out through this hallway, and if that's not an option, you're going to get out through this window, and we're all going to meet at the end of the driveway. Plans are meant to be simple and understandable because that's how you need them to be when you really need them. And a true retirement plan in just a few concise pages in simple English should answer these five questions. Number one, it should tell you exactly when the paychecks you create for yourself in retirement will begin and which pocket of money you'll be tapping into. Second, it should tell you in what order you'll tap into those pockets or buckets of money because that's very important. Third, a good retirement income plan won't just stay static because the cost of goods doesn't stay static either, so it will need to grow over time. Fourth, it should have built-in provisions for what should happen if you or your spouse, if applicable, should become inca incapacitated or need long-term care. And finally, this is perhaps the greatest question we can help you address. It should mathematically show you exactly how long your money will last, regardless of what happens with market crashes or global pandemics. Now, if you're sitting there saying to yourself, if this kind of thing is possible, why don't I have one of these? Why haven't I ever fully understood my plan or had this kind of reassurance? If that's you, I have two pieces of encouragement as we wrap up today. First, you are not alone. Believe it or not, the vast majority of those we visit with week in and week out have been working with a financial advisor for years without ever having a true written retirement income plan. We unfortunately see this all the time. So don't think for a second, you're the odd one out. This is incredibly common. And second, it is not your fault. Somewhere along the way in our retirement planning world, the shift from pensions to 401ks occurred and all of a sudden the monkey got put on your back to recreate your retirement income paycheck. And it's not your fault. We as fiduciaries are here to talk to you about what we can be doing and educate you um, to make sure that those that retirement income plan is written for you and written well so that you understand it. So our third and final action for you is to get a written retirement income plan following today's session. This plan does all five things we just covered in a few short pages. And best of all, it's an easy to read layman's terms that you can understand at all times. What does that really mean to you? It means that you can finally put many people's biggest concern, do I really have enough? You can put that concern to bed. Because we'll all, we have all tested that mathematically for you and ensured in writing exactly how long your money will last and exactly how long your plan will work. Listen, there's plenty of other things to put your mind on right now. I get it. Your money doesn't have to be one of them. So if you'd like to have this kind of clarity, again, just click that icon on your screen and select a time that works for you for a 15-minute phone consultation. It's complimentary and no obligation. Oh, and if you're concerned about what that 15-minute phone call is going to be like, well, here's what it won't be. It won't be someone sitting on the other end of the line trying to pitch you something. Maybe you've had that experience before. Instead, it will simply be us asking a few questions and listening, hearing what your concerns are and what concerns you most, and determining how we might serve you best. As we mentioned, you can request that free risk analysis to see what portion of your nest egg is still at risk of further losses, we can complete the Roth conversion review for you to show you what you could still save in taxes, and we can start your retirement income plan for you. All of these are absolutely complimentary, and frankly, we just think they're important for you to have done, regardless of what comes next. So click on that icon and grab a time that works for you, 
and we'll give you a we'll give you a call at that time. So I've put the icon up here on the screen. If you guys can see it, you should be able to keep uh, getting on our calendar. Um, and I just wanted to kind of um, go over a few things with you as you take advantage of finding some time on our calendar. Um, we'll go over on the call how, how you can work with us, how we get compensated. We are a we are fiduciaries in our office, and so we're a hybrid practice, and we'll we'll meet you where you're at from a from a fee standpoint on what works best for you. So just kind of um, to throw that out there for full transparency for you. If you decide to take advantage of a call, great. We'd love to chat with you, see if you're a good fit for us. Like I said earlier, not everyone's a good fit for us, and and everyone's on, and we're not a good fit for everybody. So that call will really just kind of iron that out and see if you want to move forward. Um, but you know, if you decide not to take advantage of the time on our calendar, um, and, and even if you do, I have a few pieces of advice for you as we go through um, to the end here. Number one, um, you know, watch something that you guys want. Enjoy this time. Try to find the the silver lining. Every black cloud has a silver lining. So it, you know watch something special on Netflix or Amazon Prime or whatever you guys watch um, or turn off the TV and go, go uh, you know, go do something fun outside. Um, enjoy a, a cup of coffee on your patio, right? So um, go grab something to drink, take a deep breath, take in the outdoors. Enjoy the, the little things that we've likely all taken for granted. I know I have. And just remember this, there are better days ahead. And before you know it, we'll be cooking out with friends over the 4th of July. And at some point, the ballparks will be back open. And everything is going to be okay. I hope you'll find time today to unwind, wherever that might be for you. And to remember this simple fact, you are absolutely undefeated in facing the challenges life has thrown your way. And you will make it through this one too. You're absolutely undefeated in facing the challenges life has thrown your way. And you will make it through this one too. So sit down, relax, take a deep breath. And just enjoy this time with your family. I just wanted to pop back on here to say thank you everybody and uh, really appreciate your time today we look forward to hearing from you get some time on our calendar and like I said we're not right for everyone everyone's not right for us we'll see if we'll be able to offer any kind of value to you and if we can and there's a way for us to work together then we'll get that squared away really appreciate everyone have a wonderful rest of your day and uh, stay safe Wash your hands.